When you were diagnosed with osteoporosis, did your doctor immediately suggest medication? But instead of feeling reassured, you felt overwhelmed, maybe confused, or possibly even a little scared. You're not alone. There's so much conflicting information out there about osteoporosis medications. Do they actually help? Are they safe? What are the long-term risks? In this video, we'll break it all down so that you can feel confident about your bone health decisions and have an informed conversation with your doctor. We'll go over how osteoporosis medications work, specifically those that slow down bone loss. And we'll also talk about the benefits of medication, the potential risks and key questions that you should ask your doctor before making a decision. My goal with this video is to empower you with the knowledge so that you can have an informed conversation with your doctor and feel confident about your bone health choices. Hello, I'm Sarah and I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and a BoneFit certified fitness instructor. I'm also a 500 hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. I'm on a mission to reduce the number of osteoporotic fractures that happen each year. And I am pleased to have you join me in the journey to better bone health. Let's begin our overview of medications for bone health. First, there are two basic types of medications. There are medications that slow or stop bone from being broken down. And then there are medications that stimulate new bone growth. Bone building and breaking bone down are both natural processes that happen every day in our bodies. And they actually maintain a certain balance between the two processes in our bodies. They work together. This means that if the body starts building more bone, then our bodies also start breaking down more bone. If the body slows down the breakdown of bone, then bone building also slows down. That is an important thing to consider when you're looking at medications. So keep it in mind as we go over the ins and outs of medication today. So let's move into talking about medications that slow or stop bone from being broken down. Stopping bone loss sounds like a no brainer, right? I mean, if your bones are getting weaker, when you want to stop that ASAP, it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. And let's talk about why. There are situations where a person is losing more bone than they should be for a variety of different reasons. And taking a medication that slows bone loss could potentially be helpful to bring the body back into the right balance. Medications in this category include bisphosphonates, such as Alendronate, Fosamax, Reclast, and Boniva. Prolia is not a bisphosphonate, but it also works to slow bone loss by a different chemical mechanism. What happens when you take these medications for years? Are there hidden risks that your doctor might not have mentioned? We'll get into that in just a bit, but first let's talk about some important questions to ask your doctor when it comes to medications that slow bone loss. These questions can include, what's the long-term plan? How long should I take this medication? How can I improve my bone quality while taking this medication? Will this medication also slow new bone growth? What are the side effects of taking this medication? What side effects are common and which ones are rare? What should I look out for if I choose to take this medication? Do I have any other medical conditions that could be aggravated by taking this medication? Are there any alternatives to taking this medication that would be a better fit for my personal situation? There are some things to consider when taking a medication that slows bone loss long term. When you first start taking a medication that slows bone loss, your body is likely hanging on to good bone and this probably benefits your body. But since the body is supposed to break down old bone that's worn out and not in good shape anymore, the consequences of bone that should have been broken down and then isn't can be really problematic. A situation like this can develop when someone takes this type of medication for many years without other intervention. 
In this scenario, a person will appear to have thicker bones on a DEXA scan, but the thicker bones can potentially have sheets of dead cells somewhere in the middle that make the bone not high quality, brittle, and weak. So you may have heard about spontaneous fractures that happen even while someone's taking medication for osteoporosis. It's the lesser quality of bone that leads to this type of situation. Okay, let's do a quick recap. We've covered what these medications do and why they're prescribed, but now let's get into the side effects because this is where things get interesting. It's important to understand the difference between common and rare side effects with medications for bone health. Common side effects include gastrointestinal or digestive issues that can include feeling nauseous, experiencing heartburn, and having a combination of both diarrhea and constipation. It's also possible to experience mild pain in bones, joints, and muscles. Having headaches or feeling dizzy, feeling like you have the flu after the first dose and potentially even running a fever. This is more common when someone has an infusion of something like Reclast. If you lay down too quickly after taking an oral bisphosphonate, it can lead to having reflux and irritation in the esophagus. These symptoms tend to get better over time as your body adjusts to the medication. Most people worry about the common side effects, but what about the ones that could seriously impact your long-term health? I'm gonna cover those next. Okay, let's go over some of the more serious side effects. It's important to understand that these side effects are rare. They're not likely to happen, but they are possible. And there's something to be aware of and to consider how you personally feel about taking medication. Having serious side effects is much more likely when someone takes a bisphosphonate for a period of longer than five years. This means that if your doctor wants you to take a bisphosphonate, it's important to know what the long-term plan is. I think it's also important to ask if there are ways to reduce or to mitigate these side effects. The first serious side effect is one that's actually quite well known. It's osteochronosis of the jaw. This is a condition caused by lack of blood flow to the jaw that leads to jaw death. In essence, it means that the jaw does not heal properly. This can be a real problem if you need to have dental work done. The likelihood of this one can be reduced in a couple of different ways. First, get regular dental checkups every six months and have your dentist monitor the state of your jaw. When you get dental x-rays, dentists can actually tell a lot about the state of your bones. This is because your jawbone is generally in the x-ray. So if anything is amiss, your dentist can give you a heads up about it before anything becomes really serious. This makes getting regular checkups critical. Talk to your dentist about taking medication for bone loss so that they're aware of it and it's on their list of things to check regularly too. See if there's a way to avoid taking this medication for a period of longer than five years. The next serious side effect is spontaneous femur fractures. This is the one that I mentioned earlier and it happens as a result of taking a bisphosphonate for too long, generally more than five years. For spontaneous fractures to happen, old dead bone is not broken down and cleared away properly. And instead the body has thick but brittle bones that are more prone to fracture. The best way to mitigate this one is to not take a bisphosphonate for more than five years. You can also work to improve your bone quality through diet and exercise, whether you choose to take a medication like this one or not. There are a couple of other serious side effects that include developing ulcers in the esophagus, which can be helped by not laying down soon after taking this medication and also eye inflammation. Sometimes with bisphosphonates, eyes can swell, they can feel irritated, and you can also experience pain. In the most serious cases, it can even lead to changes in vision. Bisphosphonates get a lot of bad press because of the more serious side effects. Keep in mind that the more serious side effects become more likely after taking the medication for five or more years. If you don't feel good while taking a bisphosphonate, the good news is that this class of medications is actually the easiest one to stop taking. It's important to bring up that Prolia, even though it works similarly to bisphosphonates and has similar long-term side effects, Prolia is not easy to stop taking. 
Prolia is generally considered a long-term medication. And if you've taken Prolia and you ever find yourself in a situation where you wanna stop taking it, you need to first switch to, to taking a bisphosphonate for a year after stopping Prolia before you stop taking medication. When a person stops taking Prolia, the body tends to go into overdrive, breaking down bone, which is something that we want to avoid. There's another topic that's related to side effects from bisphosphonates and Prolia that doesn't get as much press time, but it's important to talk to your doctor about, and that's heart health. The scientific evidence that's available is mixed, with some studies showing that bisphosphonates increase the risk for developing an irregular heartbeat, also known as atrial fibrillation, while others suggest cardiovascular benefits, such as reducing arterial calcification from taking bisphosphonates. In a meta-analysis called the risk of atrial fibrillation with use of oral and intravenous bisphosphonates by Dr. Sharma with colleagues that was published in the American Journal of Cardiology that looked at bisphosphonates and irregular heartbeat, a connection was found between bisphosphonate use and the risk of developing new atrial fibrillation. Researchers identified that both oral and intravenous use of bisphosphonates increased the likelihood of developing new atrial fibrillation, but that the risk was considerably higher with intravenous use. This is where someone has an infusion of a medication like Reclast. The meta-analysis suggests that it's important to monitor cardiac rhythm in patients who are undergoing bisphosphonate therapy. This isn't commonly discussed with regards to bisphosphonates, but is, in my opinion, something to be aware of and to monitor with your doctor. If you have a previous cardiac condition or already have an irregular heartbeat, then perhaps you wanna to talk to your doctor about taking an oral form rather than having an infusion if you choose to take medication. Doctors are busy and they see many patients. Remind your doctor of your various medical conditions, advocating for yourself to ensure that you get the best care that's possible. I'll link to the study data in the description for this video if you want to explore this topic further. So have you ever been prescribed an osteoporosis medication? What was your experience like? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. Deciding whether or not to take osteoporosis medication is a deeply personal choice. And today we've covered a lot of important information to help you make a more informed decision. We talked about how bone naturally builds and breaks down and how medications like bisphosphonates and prolia work to slow bone loss. We also covered both common and serious side effects, including gastrointestinal issues, osteochronosis of the jaw, spontaneous fractures, and potential heart health concerns. Most importantly, we went over key questions to ask your doctor so that you can create a treatment plan that fits your personal health needs. Remember that there's no one size fits all answer when it comes to osteoporosis treatment. What matters most is that you feel confident in your decision, that you have an open and informed discussion with your doctor. So what worries you most about osteoporosis treatment? Is it the side effects, the effectiveness, the long-term risks? Drop your answer in the comments down below. And if you're still debating whether medication is right for you, check out my next video where we talk about osteoporosis medications that actually build new bone. Thank you for joining me today in the journey to better bone health. I look forward to talking with you soon.